Hello, everyone. This is Jackie M from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. I'm tempted to say good morning because we are actually starting with Europe and it's 10 o'clock in the morning in uh, Europe Central at the moment. Sorry, just let me close down all my notifications before it drives everyone crazy. But welcome to the final in our series of Ramadan Around the World where we have our Masters of Malaysian Cuisine chefs, MOMC at Heart chefs, and our guests, including Malaysian diplomats based around the world, who have uh, very graciously showed us recipes on uh, how to produce uh, easy Malaysian recipes that are suitable for breaking fast. And today we're very honored to have uh, Daktin Paduka uh, Norashkin, who is Malaysia's ambassador to Sweden. How are you, Daktin? I'm fine, thank you, Jackie. Nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. Just give me two seconds while I sort out my uh, configurations on Facebook and make sure everything is working okay. And also, guys, I have Renee Jufri, who, of course, is Masters of Malaysian Cuisine's uh, Dubai-based chef. Renee is very, very, uh, very, very busy, especially during Ramadan. And he is here, here with us today. And Renee, uh, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, good to see you, Jackie. Good to see you, Datin. And obviously, good to be back with everyone, uh, familiar faces and new faces. Yeah, it's been really hectic uh, during the Ramadan uh, right now, obviously. Everyone uh, also, I think, around the world is excited with this uh, particular season. So good to be back. So let's uh, enjoy the day today. Yeah, thank you so much, Rene. And uh, Her Excellency, Dati Paduka, uh, what is, first of all, I, I always get very curious about Malaysian embassies around the world. How much Malaysian food do you get to experience when you're so far away? Uh, well, in Sweden, we can get the raw materials uh, quite easily because there's a lot of um, uh, Asian grocery stores. So we have um, Asian, uh, we have Thai uh, Thai uh, grocery stores and we have the South Asian. So it's quite quite easy to get the raw ingredients. But oh. in terms of restaurants, there's, uh, in Stockholm, there's none actually. So we oh, all have to cook God. ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, what a travesty. <laughs> so chef, chef uh, Rene would love to have you to come. <laughs> ah, I will pop over, I'll let you know. <laughs> there you go, sorted. We'll, we'll, we'll organize that for a future trip. That sounds fantastic. Um, Dustin, uh, what are you, uh, what have you got lined up for us in so far as uh, today's recipe? Can you tell us a little bit about your choice? Yes, well, today uh, uh, I'll be preparing um, Skagen toast. Um, it's a shrimp, uh, shrimp, um, uh, it's an appetizer actually, and it's Swedish, it's not Malaysian, so I did not full, it fully f follow the beef. So it's a Swedish dish, very popular here, um, uh, and um, a lot the Malaysians that I know, I mean, they love this dish, and it's very easy to make. You don't need that uh, many ingredients, uh, and you can have it, well, when you break fast, you know, like a, like a light meal. Or, or you can have it even for saho, the morning meal, because it's very, very easy to make. Okay, skull and toast. Uh, do you know so, what it is, Renee? No, let's surprise me. Let's uh, do <laughs> something new. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, guys, uh, thanks again so much for tuning in. We have, uh, like I said, again, Her Excellency Datin Paduka Norashkin, who is Malaysia's ambassador to Sweden, and she is going to be making uh, a Swedish essentially kind of like a light meal is, is light how meal. you just yeah uh, and it's called skagen toast i hope i pronounced it right uh, sorry to everyone all the sweets out there if i haven't uh, so let's play the let's play the recording now thank you very much for dropping in to say hello Dustin, and we will see you again soon you're and... most welcome <laughs> thank enjoy, you enjoy the, thank the, you my, my and, yeah. and thank you renee we'll, we'll catch up with you in a bit and let's play Dustin's recording now Okay, here we go. Good morning from Stockholm. My name is Nora Shikin. I'm the Malaysian ambassador in Sweden and also accredited to Norway, Denmark and Iceland. Um, for those who are celebrating the Ramadan, I wish you Ramadan Mubarak and I hope you're having a good month uh, fasting. So uh, today I'll be uh, preparing Skagen Nora or Skagen Toast. It's a classic uh, Swedish dish. Um, so this is a very easy dish for us to uh, make, uh, you know, when we do have time, or and it's delicious. Uh, so for the Ramadan, now we are already into the three into three weeks of Ramadan. So uh, maybe you have no idea what to make. 
and uh, this dish will be very suitable for our early morning uh, meal, the saho, or later on in the evening after breaking our fast um, uh, or after our travel prayers. Um, well, this is a, a, as I say, a classic dish, and it was invented by the famous uh, Swedish uh, chef Thor Redman in 1958. Um, can be found in the menu of uh, most uh, Swedish uh, restaurants. Um, it is uh, traditionally made with shrimp, uh, mayonnaise and dill. And today it's common uh, to add creme fraiche, red onion, uh, lemon and fish roll. And for a Malaysian twist, you can always add some chilli to have some cake. So let's start. Uh, first, I will show you the ingredients. Uh, uh, I'm using here 250 grams of peeled shrimps. Uh, it's normally um, uh, you can get it uh, in a in a in a in a pack in the supermarket. Uh, it's normally in brine, so drain it well and make sure it's dry. Otherwise, your scaldanora will turn out watery. And then uh, this is some dill and red onion, and uh, this is um, about three tablespoons of um, creme fraiche. And this is three, three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Okay, uh, and then of course you have uh, some lemon juice and salt and pepper to taste. I am not adding salt because um, the shrimp is already quite salty from the brine. Okay, let's start. Uh, first, we put in the mayonnaise. And then the cream fresh. And the onions. And the other. So, rora means um, uh, mash or uh, just like mixing things together. Uh, and uh, Skagen actually is a place in Denmark. And uh, uh, apparently the chef was out on the, on the water on a boating competition, but there was no win and his, uh, and, they, you know, and they, they were not winning. So, to make his um, uh, crew happy, uh, he decided to cook them something and then he just found whatever that's available uh, on the boat So this is what he had. So that's why the name is called is called after Skagen. It's actually in Denmark uh, Right, so let's put in the shrimp As you can see, it's very simple and not much preparation as well. And it's best served uh, chilled. So um, uh, after you mix it, you can put it in the fridge and if it's left overnight in the fridge, it will taste even better. Okay, so we season it with some pepper. There you go. So this is the uh, spaghetti roll. Okay, let's put this aside. So we get some butter and uh, white bread. So I made it into a square.
So you find this dish in uh, as appetizer in uh, many classic Swedish restaurant, um, and uh, but you know you can uh, if you want it as a main dish you can have the bigger portion I guess. But it's very very popular. You'll find it you know you can find it also ready made in the supermarket. So uh, you don't have to mix it and just. Um, uh, yeah, just bring it home and eat it with some bread. Yeah, the induction uh, stove is always a bit difficult to manage, but uh, well, let's see. So I also uh, prepared uh, a skagandora earlier, which we will uh, use for the toast. what I was looking for, the sizzle. So cook it until it's um it's golden. Golden brown, and you have a nice crunch to it, and then you have the stuffing around. Okay, let me see. Okay, it's smoking now, so I think off. Okay, so there we are with the toast. Okay, so now uh, now let's prepare the uh, skagen rora or toast skagen. Uh, Place the toast on a plate. Uh, scoop some of the scagalora on the toast. And then uh, let's garnish, put some garnish. So there's some lemon. And then. They also, um, people also serve uh, skagomora with a fish roll. So this also you can get at the supermarket. Sometimes they call it caviar. So there you go. So this is uh, skagomora. Enjoy. Have a nice day. 
Okay, that definitely looks like something I would eat. So let me just uh, actually just quickly bring back. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> We're both trying to do the same thing at the same time. Let me bring back Renee and uh, Her Excellency Latin Padukko and Rashkin again. Uh, that is actually, actually really, really delicious and quite simple to make as well. When you make it for yourself, do you usually add any sambal or anything to give the Malaysian touch? Or? No, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. I'm just okay. putting a little bit of cotton moist in the background somewhere. Where is that coming from? Oh, sorry. Let me have a look. Paul, sorry, can you pick up the noise? Yes, it's from uh, Dutton Paduka and Ashkin's side. Um, I think <laughs> your microphone is possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think there's a problem with uh, the microphone. Uh, that thing. Apparently, it might be just um, something disrupting it. Okay. Can you hear us okay? Uh, I can hear you well, but just there's some crackling noise. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, let's see how it goes. But yeah, I just wanted to quickly ask you whether you would add any sambal when you make it for yourself at home. Yeah, well, in the preparation, uh, well, there's some people who put in the chili sauce. But actually, okay. it's nice to put in chopped, chopped chili. Or as one of yeah. my colleagues, what she did was, we have this, uh, we have a Swedish uh, Italian uh, 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 colleague of mine. She he put a chopped uh, chili on the scaganora, which is it was very good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do too. <laughs> what do you think, Renee? Renee is our Michelin trained chef, guys. For those of you who haven't met Renee lately because he's been so busy, what do you think? Yeah, um, uh, probably both both option is nice. Uh, and it's something really interesting to to have. It's like a canapé as well, uh, similar to that. Uh, chopped chili. Yeah, because it's creamy, right? Uh, if you put sambal, okay, sambal because you cook with the onion and such, you have a lot of flavors. But then you want to have that uh, shrimp flavors, that nice uh, sour cream or fresh, cream fresh flavor. So chopped chili or chili flakes, I think, right? These two will make a, a good uh, punch in the dish, yeah. See, there you go, guys. See, Renee, like I said, is, the, is our Uber chef. He knows these sort of stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks again so much. Uh, Renee, we'll have you back later on. And thank you very much again, Dustin, for your cooking segment. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Most welcome. Okay, oh, bye-bye. Okay, guys, uh, now, uh, Renee, what we have is another cooking segment. And this time, I actually went down to Canberra, guys, overnight to film this. And this was with our Australian contingent. We had uh, the um, Mr. Farid uh, Zakaria, who is the Deputy High Commissioner of Malaysia to Australia. And he had to stand in at the last minute for, the, uh, uh, for our High Commissioner, actually, because of covid restrictions and all that sort of stuff but mr farid zakaria actually made a uh umai from sarawak because mr Zak uh, farid zakaria's wife is from sarawak so that was a very interesting segment and also we had a uh, representing australia mr ridwan Z jadwat who is actually originally from south africa but he is the uh australian uh, First Assistant Secretary of Southeast Asia, Maritime Division of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So we basically, basically we had Mr. Farid Zakaria do Umai first, and then we had some Sarawakians who happened to be on site because they were having a Ramadan Bazaar at the High Commission, and they <laughs> decided to taste test it. And then followed by Mr. Ridwan Jadwan, who made a South African dish called Bunny Chow. I don't know, Renee, if you remember of bunny chow from i think uh, one of i think uh, somebody made it in our group a while back did, did they yeah yeah uh, they were <laughs> something similar to the bunny chow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so that was interesting but it was quite funny we had a lot of fun because we had like uh, people who were visiting the bazaar essentially malaysians they're like getting their fix of ramadan food and they just stopped by what's going on and you know unfortunately the audio isn't the best guys so just um, you know cut us a little bit of um 
<laughs> slack in terms of like the, the noisy surroundings. But if you pay close attention, you will learn how to make a beautiful, beautiful umai. I never actually, uh, Renee, because I know you make um, the vegan, what's that? Hinaba, right? Hinaba, what, yeah. Yeah, which is similar to umai, isn't it? If, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, umai is like the Sarawak version of raw fish, but it's very, very nice. I actually taste tested it. Unfortunately, because it was Ramadan and everybody was fasting, <laughs> they couldn't actually taste it themselves. So they had to get our audience to taste it. But OK, so let's play our Australian video from the, from my camera trip. OK, and I'll see you in a bit again, Renee. Ciao. Yeah. And from us as a Malaysian cuisine, and we are very, very excited to have our our Australian contribution to Ramadan around the world. And right here with me, I've got Mr. Farid and Mr. Ridwan, and Mr. Farid's title, Deputy High Commissioner of Malaysia. And we are located at the Malaysian High Commission over in Canberra right now. I've just traveled all the way from Sydney to do this. And Mr. Ridwan has a very, very long title. <laughs> Can you tell us? Okay. Uh, first Assistant Secretary, Southeast Asia Maritime Division in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and also Australia's oh, Special Envoy to the organization. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. See what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I had a posting to Malaysia. Yeah. I was on posting in Kuala Lumpur for 2012, 2015, so very fond memories of living there. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, now, guys, uh, we have two very interesting dishes for you. Mr. Farid is going to make. Umai. Umai. Now, Mr. Farid, uh, umai is something that's from uh, Sarawak, is that yes, right? Correct. Cool, cool. Um, and you, you're, you're going to use two different types of seafood here. Yeah. I have never tried umai, by the way, but I'm very, very curious to see how you do it. So let's uh, let's go for it. All right. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> uh, first off, I would like to uh, convey. Uh, uh, the High Commission Street for not being able to be here. He is in self-isolation at this point of time. He's supposed to go there. <laughs> 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 okay. And I, it's, my, it's my job to, to introduce something from Malaysia. So, uh, umai is a dish from uh, Sarawak, uh, most popularly uh, uh, cooked by the Malanao people. Okay. All right. So, I, I, I just came back uh, a few days ago. So I had umai in uh, uh, cooked by a friend of my wife. So this is his recipe. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have uh, a paramundi, of course, because we're in Australia. We use paramundi and also cream. So to start off, uh, I'm gonna um, slice the paramundi thinly. Do you need a hand with this, or are you okay? Let him do his thing. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Let me do it. Do you think this can be okay? Uh, no. Okay. So you can show us your knife skills. Uh, I don't actually have any. <laughs> I belong to the, uh, the generation of, uh, you know, quick processes and all that. So, okay, so just this slice it thinly. Okay, okay sure. So in Sarawak, what sort of fish would they use usually? Uh, it's, it's mainly white fish. Okay. And um, obviously you can't, you don't use like you would buy a whole fish and then you fillet it at home yes. and all that. So it's a little bit more involved. Yep. So we're quite fortunate here to be able to get those fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, is it common to like have a mixture of fish and prawns? Not, not really. This, this is just my version. Okay, okay, yeah. sure. But you can get prawn umai as well. Of course. Okay, sure, sure. I've never tried it, so I'm really curious to know what it tastes yeah. like. And also uh, squid umai. Okay. Yeah. Anything, right. any, any type of shellfish okay. or, or seafood. Okay, sure, sure. Is it like, um, do you eat it like for, for dinner or like for afternoon tea or as a snack? Or? Yeah, it's a snack. Okay, sure. It's like an appetizer. Okay, sure, sure. <laughs> 
fish, young fish, baby yeah, fish, right? really? young baby bream, okay. white fish, okay. more tender. Alright, oh, sure. So, do you guys eat this all the time in Sarawak or any like special occasions? I, I special occasions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it? Yeah, that's it. What's that? Can't try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say this tastes good. <laughs> That's it. Okay, that's it. Yep. That's so sort of it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody wants to try? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have a true blue Sarawakian here to try this with my Amy. Amy, Amy. yeah. <laughs> and she's going to tell us what it, what it tastes right like. Middle. <laughs> Amy and David. 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 Yeah. David. Yeah. Nice, right? Yeah. 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 Is it the last one? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Really? And then See, there you go. See? There you go. Here you go. Wow. Yeah. 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 Sign up, guys, if you want this recipe, sign up at MalaysianChefs.com slash join today. Okay? Right. And I'll email it to everyone. There you go, success! Yes. Well done! That's my part. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like yeah. such a midget, right? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Nice. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Ridwan, who's going to be making a South African specialty, and it is called. Bunny chow. Bunny chow. Beans bunny. Beans bunny? Okay, so this is a vegetarian version. This one's a vegetarian version. Okay. Um, and because I was born in South Africa, we immigrated. Uh, to escape apartheid uh, when I was nine years old, sure, in 1981. Sure. But I have vivid memories of having bunny chow uh, okay. in Durban. Can you tell so, us why it's called bunny chow? Well, it's hard to uh, clarify. There's a lot of uh, conflict in history over why the name bunny came to be. Okay. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it's stuck and it's become a really popular takeaway dish okay. uh, in South Africa, particularly in Durban. It started with, with, with Indian workers who believed were working on the sugarcane fields and we needed a way to transport their, their sort of lunch okay. into the field. So they hollowed out uh, pieces of bread okay. and then put the curry in there. Okay. And that's how it's evolved. Okay. Nice. So we're going to try today. So it's a bit of, uh, a, so a, bit of uh, a blend of, of different flavors. Excellent. So what Excellent. I'll just need is that to be turned on. Okay. Sure. Uh, nice. And then I'll put some oil in there. So uh, South Africa, Durban, uh, in yeah, so okay. in South Africa, the uh, there's an Indian population uh, that Indians uh, came to South Africa to work in sugarcane fields, but there are also merchants who came okay. from different parts of India, uh, and it's a very large uh, and significant Indian community okay. in, in Durban, in okay. the province of Brazil, Okay. Uh, and then my ancestors on my father's side are descended from those people, right. and on my mum's side are uh, descended from the Cape Malay people, okay. who were brought to South Africa by the Dutch in the 1600s. Sure, sure. And they came as slaves and political prisoners, uh, and they come from what's now Java and Makassar, and also I believe in Malacca as well, okay. which is on the Dutch people. Yeah, yeah. So, my family history is, is very mixed, uh, and so the food that we eat is very mixed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> You would have felt like right at home in Malaysia. Oh yes, that's why I loved it so much. It was a really wonderful place. <laughs> My family and I really enjoyed it. Wait, we have a chip. The food was amazing. Call it a 10 kilo person. <laughs> so, because uh, the food is so good. Uh, and uh, is that warm enough? Yes, definitely. So we've got the onions going in. I come prepared. I come prepared. I did it at home. I did it at home. So, make that nice and uh, translucent. Okay. How different is urban Indian food to what we find in, say, in India? It is different, actually. The flavors are different. Okay. I think it just was blended over the years uh, to reflect the flavors of the people there. Uh, and you can't... Uh, you sort of don't have the same flavor when you go to, to India or you eat at Indian restaurants than what you're used to from uh, South African Indian uh, flavors. And my mum uh, is an amazing cook and she uh, is an expert at the, the Durban Indian curry, the biryani, that kind of thing. So, uh, really easy. What I'm going to make for you today is also just a very easy version. So 
for people who need quick comfort food, it's a really easy dish to make because um, what you do is I'm using beans that come in a can, so really easy to, uh, to make and very quick. <laughs> and you put some, um, throw some, some garlic in there. Let's just take up some garlic and then ginger. You got really convenient on that. Then mix that around a bit. Here in India, they don't use powder. Yeah, okay. They do that in Germany, like in Germany. You do, you do. And then, so now we're going to use um, the curry powder. This is curry powder. Start putting all the different spices in. Uh, then some ground coriander. And then to make the base of the curry. And then just stir that around. So the curry absorbed, is absorbed into the tomato. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> 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 Not that often, but um, every now and then you can eat a quick, uh, a quick meal. It's very easy to make. You can see the richness of the colours with the turmeric and all the different spices, and the tomato and the onion. So that's a really good base for almost any curry. Um, so once that's cooked through, like that, the, still, uh, the heat's still okay. Yep. Then we put uh, the beans in. Okay. 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 It's only in the morning, in the afternoon, and then that means a good uh, cook to get the beans to absorb all the, the sort of spice and flavour. Okay. We just keep stirring that around, and then. That can be, you can stir that around for about 10 minutes or so. Uh, and then once the, the, the curry is sort of absorbed uh, and it's thick but also saucy, okay. and then we'll, we'll pop it in the, in the, in the bread. Okay. So do they usually make their own bread when they do this in South Africa? No, not really. You get it, you get it from the store. I remember as a child when I went to school, we used to, as little kids, go to the store and buy a, a bunny cow and share it. It's like about three or four boys in, in school. And I remember it cost 50 cents. And um, it's shared of the, the beans bunny to sit there, get the loaf of bread. It's, it's cut in half. You take out the, the white uh, middle, and then you scoop it out, and then you put the curry in, and you put the, the uh, white, top, uh, white stuffing on top, and then you eat it with your hands. Okay, okay. Uh, that's how it is. <laughs> so you don't have to, like, the, the, the bread is, like, cold, it's not, like, no, it doesn't toasted need, on it. No, no, okay. it doesn't need to be toasted. Okay. So it's basically a vegetarian dish? This is a vegetarian, but you can also you make can. Uh, mutton, bunny chow, different types of chicken, uh, but uh, different flavor. I thought this is a vegetarian one. It's very, very easy to make and very quick. For a TV show, <laughs> <laughs> and the flavour, I hope you'll like it. But um, it's got a really good uh, tang to it, and also some spice. Do you put any sugar on? I guess it is. No. Okay. okay. So, like with some African got, curries, that you, you call them Malay curries. Yes. Oh. They're called breedies. So I don't know where the word breedy comes from, but um, like my mum's Cape um, Malay style curries are sweet. Okay. So you've got like uh, some sugar for like sugar beans, breedy, cabbage breedy, cauliflower breedy, okay. uh, and uh, that has a different flavour than the Indian uh, yeah. style, which is spicy and hotter. Sure. Okay. Very cool. So how's, how's that looking? You're just going to stir it around a bit more. Okay. Um, Do you need to reduce it or? Uh, 
a little bit, as okay. long as you get the flavours absorbed into them, because the beans yeah. are already cooked beans, yeah. so it doesn't need that much of uh, uh, time on the uh, on this sure. coat. Does it need any salt or anything? A little bit. Okay. Okay. Just add. And oh, nice. a little bit Not too much. Just some some brown chili. It should be good. Hopefully, you can try it out there and tell me what it tastes like. It's definitely great. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't responsible for the bread. I wasn't responsible for the curry. Now, with the beans, um, do they use different types of beans or is this what they use? Different types of beans, but the butter beans are something that the broad beans are quite okay. popular. Okay, okay. And would they usually use it out on pan or would they Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or, or you can buy the, the fresh beans, I mean, like, okay. as long as you soak it overnight and sure, get sure. it ready. How does the colours look? Beautiful. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> I might give up my day job, but you know, <laughs> being a diplomat is uh, challenging, but uh, a cook is not really my uh, expertise, I would say. Postings in different countries around the world. Uh, my last posting, I was ambassador to Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. Um, I was lucky there, of course, ambassador's residence to have a chef who was fantastic, so I didn't do that much cooking there. Uh, but in Malaysia, uh, I'm posting in Iran. Uh, also in Cairo, so I've learned different flavors over the years. Okay, so you eat local food and you're posted in those places? You get to know the local style. How does Saudi, uh, how does, uh, Saudi Arabian food compare to Iran? The Saudi, uh, they preferred a lot of rice and lamb. Okay. Uh, no, Iran, the lamb was really popular too, but like chishlik, which is uh, like uh, you know, grilled lamb. Uh, and they also have food like fesenjun and lots of vegetable type dishes as well, and gome sabzi. So different flavors in different countries. So being a, a diplomat has been a great insight into how people you know, cook around the world and different flavors that come from the different ancestries. So that's also been a really good part of being uh, you know, a diplomat for Australia. It's just the opportunity to meet people from all over the world, yeah. sample different cultures and food. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, just get to see the world. Yeah. You can turn that down a bit now. What's your favorite from recent dish? Laksa. Laksa. Oh. Sarawak laksa. Oh. It's, it's the best. He's just saying that. No, no. <laughs> I, when I was in Kuala Lumpur, I used to walk to Pavilion Mall in KL, and in the food court, there was a place that sold Sarawak laksa. Yeah, I know the one I It was the best. And it was like a weekend tradition. I loved doing that. So, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and roti chana, of course, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. with the chicken curry and yeah. all that. So I think we can um, we can start now. You got You can use your hands. You can always wash. Yeah. You take this out. Okay. Like that. So you keep this and use yeah. it to dunk. To dip. Okay. Dip. okay. And then. Oh, okay. Put that closer. And just hold it up there. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Red. We'll get Mr. Ho to take photos because he demolished us. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll have to say, Red, why can you make a couple more so we can take photos? All right, and then, so, you use that to scoop. You eat around it. Okay. Hey. So, <laughs> that, can you see it? There you go. Yeah. Let's hold it up. Yeah. Well, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> Funny chow, guys. Funny chow. <laughs> In camera. In camera, yeah. Well, please South come. Africa. Who wants to have a try? Who wants to have a try? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll, maybe we'll get someone from the Malaysian High Commission to, uh, to try. Yeah. Oh, you know, bridges between Australia and Malaysia. So, uh, so you uh, use your hand if you use that as a 
That's a tipping thing. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> There you go guys, uh, Bonnie Chow, from, all the way from Durban, courtesy of Mr. Ridwan. Thank you. And Thank you. And from Durban, Umay, with prawn and garamundi, courtesy of Mr. Farish, all the way from Samoa. Well, give it a go. Don't forget to find the recipes you need to sign up for MalaysianChefs.com. Slash join today and we'll send it to your inbox, okay? Okay, thank we'll you. see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> I want to make sure that Paul doesn't kind of like remove something at the same time. Let me bring uh, Renee back on. Our uh, Renee is our master of Malaysian cuisine Uber chef because he is Michelin trained and he is very, very talented, one of the most talented Malaysian chefs working in the world today, and certainly in the uh, in the Middle East where he's based. So what do you think, Rene, uh, the bunny chow and the umai? Yeah, the, I mean, umai has been always my favorite since I have uh, tried it when I was in uh, high school before. So uh, bunny chow, I've tried it before, uh, and until today, uh, the thing that I, I think I, I suggested to one of the audience earlier, I say top it up with a nice sunny side up on the top. It will ooze idea, out right? the yolk into the bunny chow, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, and he said that because he made a vegetarian version uh, in that particular video, but apparently usually you can use like meat and all that as well, right? Uh, so yeah, it seems really interesting. It reminds me a little bit of the um, you know, seafood bisque that you get in Boston where they serve the, yeah, in, bowl, in the, yeah, it, the, the bread, bread bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's a good idea. Um, now, I want to ask you about umai. How different is it to hinaba? Is it like pretty much the same or is it different? Yeah, or? it's uh, pretty, pretty much the same. But the one uh, with uh, hinaba, hinaba because they use uh, the, the fruit, a particular, particular fruit that they slice and mix into the hinaba. So yeah, that's what makes it special in Sabah itself and also the type of fish. So what they get in Sarawak, uh, they mainly use a lot of uh, sea bass uh, and other white fish and Sabah. Um, they also use their preferred, depends on which side of uh, Sabah itself, what type of fish and seafood they get. But in particular, Hinava, because they also use uh, bitter god. This is also the unique thing that makes Hinava different and yeah, yeah, now I remember. Sorry, guys, we were talking about, if you guys haven't seen it, we did a Street Food Journey series where Renee actually made a Sabah Hinawa, but he made a vegan version because that particular series was on vegan Malaysian food. So go back and check it out on our YouTube channel, okay? YouTube.com slash Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. Um, and hit me up for the recipe as well. It's in one of our e-magazines. Okay, well, let's play the next uh, video we have lined up. And this time... It is a Brinjal writer, courtesy of Fauzia. For those of you who've been following the, 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 the Ramadan Around the World series, Fauzia is based in Pakistan and she has been contributing a segment each uh, for each of our broadcasts. And her dishes are really unique because she's based in Pakistan, like I said. And so she has her own unique take on some of the dishes. Where the flavors are very familiar to us Malaysians, but a little bit different, you know what I mean? So let's have a look at that and, uh, and and let us know what you guys think. And don't forget, guys, sign up for our recipes, malaysianchefs.com slash join today, okay? Okay, well, thanks, Renee. Uh, let me just remove you and let's play <laughs> the next video. Okay, guys, let's have a look at Fauzia. Uh, she actually did, and uh, we were going to play this next segment 
immediately after her pre previous recipe last week, but we decided to split it into two. So you won't see her on camera this time doing an introduction again, because this was meant to be tacked onto the previous one. But let's have a look. So today I also have a brinjal raita, which goes beautifully well with any type of biryani, and especially with the masoor dal biryani that I've already made for you. So we've cut this about a quarter of an inch thick, right? And I've taken like two brinjals for today, and the recipe is in my recipe book. And this will then be fried, shallow fried with very, very little oil. So we fry it one side when it gets a little golden brown, we then uh, turn it around. And then we place it in a platter, and then I'll show it to you later how we plate it. Because tempering has to be done. So after we place the fried ones, we, we add uh, yo whipped yogurt on top. Okay, the yogurt will have some salt in it. And then we do some tempering, which I'll take you to the kitchen right now and show you how the tempering is done. And then we will add a few chili powder and that's it. And it's really delicious. If you keep it in the fridge, you can have it the next day also. It's, it can be served uh, room temperature or in a cold from the fridge. So the brinjals are in a frying pan with very little oil and we will just fry them a little bit and when once when it's done from one side we turn it around all right okay use my fingers all right okay yeah you need a little patience for things to take its time when you're cooking things on slow fire fire is very low These are frying very nicely. I remember my mum, oh my god, in Ramzan she'd make like 10 things and feed the kids, especially it's a haircut. She always thought, oh my poor children are going to starve all day. And then she would be making tons and tons of things. And we were little kids then, you know, um, school going children. And then she would, at the end of all the feeding, which she would get up at 3 in the morning and cooking, she would then make, take a bowl of rice, cooked rice, and then she'd add bananas into it and dates into it and if mangoes were in season then mangoes into it and then we had to eat all that. Mum loved to feed people. Uh, she loved cooking also of course. Okay, this is almost done. Okay, now for the next step I'm going to use my fingers. Oh yeah, this is beautiful. That's about it. We don't need to do too much cooking. You know, you just have to soften them and get them a little. There you go. So the brinjals are done and I'm going to add this whipped yogurt, which has a little salt in it. Just a few pinch of salt. Yes. Now you can have the brinjals overlapping each other. That doesn't matter. Okay. Now this needs some more. And once I cover this, bring it completely with the yogurt, we will do the tempering. So that the frying, uh, uh, and on the, in the frying pan, sorry, pop is good. In the frying pan, I put a little uh, few tablespoons of oil. It's heated nicely. In that, I'm going to put this uh, round little red chili, the dry red chili. They look beautiful, actually. Where's my spoon? Yeah, and with that goes in a uh, whole cumin. So that's cumin seeds, which is called zira. And now they're cooking nicely, but we don't want to burn them. So then I quickly put some curry leaves. Oh yeah, the smell is amazing. We mustn't burn them, it's on low fire, everything's on very low fire. Let me get my spoon quickly. And that goes. Now the, this lovely uh, tempering goes on top of the yogurt. As you saw the whole uh, process. First there was fried brinjal. Then we had uh, yogurt with, with some salt on top, and now we've done that tempering business. But it's not over yet. One moment. Ah, 
I have some red chili powder and I'm going to just sprinkle that on top. Now just look at that, my God. And this is just delish. It goes with every type of curry or biryani all on its own like a snack. And you can keep it in the fridge for the next two, three days. Enjoy. Let me bring on Renee, and I'm going to ask him some questions about this. Okay, Renee. Now, uh, I noticed because, uh, by the way, guys, like I said, this is actually meant to be part of last week's session where Fauzia made a biryani for us, and now this is meant to accompany it, okay? Now, Renee, I want to ask you about biryani, okay? In Malaysia, from memory, we don't use yogurt in our biryani. Am I right? Or am I remembering it wrong? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't use yogurt like uh, the typical that you get, uh, like the Pakistani style or Indian or the Middle Eastern, yeah. Right, right. So I am right. Now, are you familiar with what she just made, which is the brinjal raita? Or? Yeah, so over here, uh, it's interesting that uh, I'm very fortunate that been, you know, uh, being here for a while, I managed to see different types of uh, raita, how... Because I started before I moved here, uh, I only know maybe cucumber raita and tomato raita, that's it. But uh, being here right now, there's different and various ways of raita has been made and accompanied to a biryani rice. Uh, it depends on what type of biryani rice also, right? So this particular raita is also very good to top up for your uh, vegetarian style of biryani. And uh, okay. if you have uh, mutton, would be very nice as well because you had uh, because the bring the uh, eggplant is very nice uh, when it's smoky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is rice always made with yogurt as a base, or like? Yes, uh, it's always as a yogurt as a base. But for yeah. out there, okay, a quick one. Uh, if you're a, a vegan, mainly a plant based, you can opt it for a cashew cream. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. Cashew cream. That sounds interesting. Okay. I might try that. But uh, yeah, I don't actually, I have to admit, I don't actually eat a lot of yogurt sort of thing. So uh, yeah, I'm more used to all the coconut based stuff that we get in Malaysia, you know. But in Malaysia with our biryani, we use evaporated milk, right? And uh, is there anything else that goes into it uh, for the for the sauce? Yeah, so mainly that we're used to is uh, evaporated milk. Uh, okay. It's very, I mean, uh, nobody put coconut milk for a biryani rice, but yeah. it's uh, interesting to try. I've already tried before. Uh, it's where you get the coconutty flavor with all these uh, spices. You know how we like, Malaysians, we like co coconut a lot. So yeah, yeah. it makes us uh, really connect to that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right, I know. <laughs> well, anyway, that's what it's all about, experimenting. Okay, well, thanks for that, Renee. Um, guys, we are going to go to Salsa Villa next. Okay, so let me just uh, bring Bella on screen and maybe uh, we can get Renee uh, as well. Hello. Okay. How are you, Bella? Okay, Bella, Hi, what, what are you making for us this time? I'm making the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the pudding cocktail with sauce. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I, by the way, guys, I'm actually in the middle of finishing off our next e-magazine, MOMC e-magazine. Um, that particular recipe is actually in the magazine. Not all the recipes can fit into the magazine. So some of them you will actually get as recipe PDF sent to your inbox. But the pudding cocktail is going into the magazine because our next issue is all on sweets. Okay. And uh, I actually, uh, mm -hmm. pudding cocktail, is that like a Malaysian version of like a custard thing? Or is it, <laughs> I wasn't sure. Yes. Uh, um, <clears throat> Malaysian, they like to mix everything together, you know, like um, they want to put fruits, but then it's difficult to get the, the fresh uh, fruits. So they use the canned one. And then because it's, uh, it's, um, syrup and then it's also nice to put the syrups uh, together with the the sauce and okay. yeah they, they eat it uh, cool and it's okay, very okay. very nice yeah especially oh. during a uh, book of puasa it's very it's like uh, sold <laughs> okay cool are you familiar with that today? like is that something you grew up eating or yes yes yeah, my so... sister used to make yeah okay yeah, so uh, it's a good share uh, because this is one of the favorites that uh, I'm, I grew up with, uh, especially remind me of my late grandmother from my mom's side, uh, mm -hmm. having this pudding. 
yeah, putting cocktail on the table. See, I was right, guys. I made a guess because I kind of think it's a yeah, it's something vaguely Malaysian, right? Even though it's kind of Western as well, right? But I uh, have a look, guys, at this next segment with Bella. So let me just remove you guys from the uh, screen and we will play her segment. Here we go. Okay. And hit us up with any questions and hopefully they'll be back to answer them for us, okay? Hi guys, today I'm going to make cocktail pudding with vanilla sauce and what uh, the ingredients that we need to have is, um, I'm going to show you, this is 1 liter of milk, 100 grams of sugar, 1 egg, 2 tablespoon of custard powder, like um, half teaspoon of uh, salt and then this is the cocktail that I'm going to use and we also need another three tablespoon of um, custard powder and two tablespoon of water okay first thing first what we need to do is we uh, take two tablespoon of uh, custard powder and about half cup of milk and stir and we put one egg okay. and the rest of the milk we are going to warm it sugar in the milk keep the using the low fire because uh, we don't want to to have a uh, the milk is burn eh? So, okay, so the milk is getting warm and stir because we have sugar in it. And then we are going to uh, put our custard in the milk. salt okay. I'll move it here a bit okay until this uh, batter is thicken and then make sure the fire is small because very is low or else we get burnt custard that we don't want that okay this uh, batter we don't need to make it so thick because this is um, uh, the sauce yeah the sauce we're going to divide into two one we are using for sauce and the rest and we are going to put uh, the rest of the custard powder and then it will uh, then we will cook it until it's uh, thick as the pudding okay this is for the sauce is ready okay I'm going to transfer half of it Okay. I'm 
then leave it cool for a moment and then we can put in the fridge okay so the rest of the custard powder three tablespoon and then two tablespoon of water mix it It's so completely dissolved now, and we are going to put in our custard. To be safe, I'm going to sieve the batter. In the meantime, I already prepared the uh, the custard, the mold, and and I wash and keep a little bit of water inside so that it won't stick when we're going to take the pudding out. Okay, this this dish is very fast to make. It's very easy. So little ingredients. And it is so tasty, especially during buka puasa. It's nice to have uh, in the put in the fridge and serve cold. Our pudding is ready. Okay, so this is the last. So this is it. This is the pudding. We have to wait until it's cooled down, and then we are going to serve with um, cold uh, custard sauce and the fruit cocktail. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay, cool, cool. Let's bring uh, Bella back on. Hey, Bella, how are you? Hi. Now, I want to ask you, uh, you know, one thing that um, that uh, I, I thought about when we saw this was, you know, growing up in Malaysia, I, I didn't use any fresh milk. Uh, we didn't drink fresh milk. Did we use fresh milk um, in Malaysia or what did you use? Uh, no, we use uh, the uh, susu uh, sajat, they call the, not the condensed one, not the thick one. Yeah, 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 that yeah. one. But yeah, but here is quite difficult to get. And then I also, uh, when I uh, look for the Oops. recipe uh, on the custard, it, it uh, stated yeah. there that you can also use the fresh milk. fresh milk. So I use fresh milk. Yeah, yeah. We can also, if you want to, uh, use the coffee milk. You know, the the, the milk that you use for coffee. The one that uh, we uh, Western they when they drink coffee they use the milk coffee milk. Oh. I tried that also. Okay. It also worked. Okay. Yeah, okay. it tastes something like evaporated milk. Oh. But right, any right. milk, yeah, yeah, you can use even even the normal um, uh, susu manis. Then you can uh, dilute like a normal milk, but it's very sweet. Then you yeah. have to lower the sugar amount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it, it, it seems like I said, it seems vaguely familiar, but I'm not sure, you know, sort of thing. But it's interesting. I, I like that kind of um, <laughs> colonial influence kind of food. Yeah. In our restaurant, you know, because it just adds that extra layer of like, yeah variety to our our food um so guys yeah that was pudding cocktail courtesy of salsa villa who is the owner and founder of bella pastisseria that you can see at the back of her thing and uh the recipe is yeah. going to be in our next e-magazine that should be coming out in the next week okay so make sure you keep your eyes out for it thank you very much again bella that was a great recipe okay. and we'll see you yeah. next time ciao all right guys uh next up we have courtesy of down down berlin who are uh, just made up of Zakia Omar and Hanno Baitha, who are both, well, Hanno has a background in cooking. He is a trained chef. And Zakia is actually a former journalist who is now both uh, part of Down Down Berlin. And they do a lot of Malaysian pop ups and, 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 and that sort of stuff over in there corner of the world in berlin so and they have prepared a video for us for something called dagging dendeng and this is a savory it's made with beef and it is absolutely delicious and according to them it's very easy to make okay so let's have a look and hopefully they'll be able to hop on later on to tell us a little bit more about dagging dendeng okay hit us up if you've got any questions and we'll try and get them answered either live on air uh or well here we go let's uh why not bring them on now Okay. Hey guys, can you hear us? Okay. Okay. Can you hear us? Whoop. Hi. Hey, Hi. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of surprised you. I know you said you wanted to hop on yeah, after. Yeah, after. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you come out. Oh, why not bring them on? Okay. Sorry about this. <laughs> <Hello. been> just... <laughs> now, I want to ask you about dagging dendeng. Um, I, I've made it before, and it's actually not that hard to make, right? No, but, it's easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, which part of Malaysia did it originate from? Do you know? I think it's very Indonesian. Okay, don't say that. The recipe comes from from uh, Kalsum Types recipe book and Hamida. Yeah, so it's from okay. a recipe book. And uh, and uh, it's a Johor palette, or maybe it's a Malaysian heritage. I don't know which one it is, but but, but, but we tried it, and and everybody loves it. How do you like it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's very very tasty. Extremely sure. tasty. I like it. I like this taste. It's great, great. Do very you spicy. see very do you spicy? See, do you see much uh, dagging dendeng in Malaysia nowadays, or I think I might see it on, on buffet spreads or something like you know. Um, our, our 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 Indonesian helpers cook it a lot, yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. sure. It, it's yeah. a kind of rendang, no? Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Saki, Saki says no. I mean, visually, it's similar, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but yeah, I mean, it uses beef, and it's got that same vibe because it's spicy and it uses beef, right? Yeah, and it's but, dark. But it doesn't. Yeah. But it cooks so quick. It just like you know, just you just like fry it. You know, yeah, it's not, yeah. it's, not oh. it's not like it's not stewed. You know, it's not it's not like cooked over a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what and, kind uh, of? Oh, I know having a cock will come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll see you. we we'll see you after. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. No worries. Okay, we'll play that and we'll come we'll come back and ask. Uh, if you've got any questions, guys, make sure you post them in the comments and we'll get Zakia and Hano to answer them after the session. Okay, so let's do this. Dagging Dendeng. Here you go. We are down down from Berlin and that's Hano over there and me, Zaki, here. And okay, Hano, what are we doing today? We're going to make we're going to make the beef ding ding. And so Hano has got something here. What do you have? Yeah, I have a nice piece of beef. It's around one kilogram and has a quite good quality and I put it in the pressure cooker. If you don't have a pressure cooker, uh, use a normal pot. It takes a little bit longer, but it's also okay. So it takes 40 minutes. Oh, around 40 minutes and I start now. Okay. 
and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, time has passed. So Hano, how does it look? Yeah, let's see. Should be good. Oh yeah, it looks really good. It looks so delicious. And how is it? Oh yeah, very tender, very tender, perfect. Now it has to be uh, cool down. Yeah, cool we have down. to cool it down a bit, no? Before and we then, cut it. so you can see the beef is done and cooled. And now Hanno is going to prepare something. What are you doing? Yo, this is a half of a liter sweet, thick soya sauce to marinate the beef. The beef is now cool and we, are to, we have to already started to, uh, to slice them into thin, yes, thinly, slice them thinly, because now we're going to pound them into very flat pieces. So use this, which is what we all know what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's the, careful, it's, it's quite called, loud. <laughs> yeah. And so this is the, the normal thing that you use um, in the, the tumbo, you know, we call it in Malay tumbo. <laughs> So just pound it, it's very loud. Sorry, I'm gonna put this away. So you just pound them so they're very thin, very flat. The thinly sliced pieces and they're all pounded, and then if you can see they are a bit big, so we decided or you know that it should be maybe made smaller because you'll see why later on when we fry these things um, uh, in the next bit no? so a bit they have to be a bit smaller because otherwise it's not so good and again this one as well half of them and just put them in the sweet soya just put them inside yeah just like and once they're all in there you're going to put them in the fridge uh, for a little bit and then get to the next step where we're going to fry them and do the bit with the spices. Okay. Now we do the paste. We have the chili, we have the garlic and, and uh, ginger, ginger and onions. onions. Okay. And, and don't, don't forget to soak the, the dry that, chilies. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's quite soft now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now we put it inside. Hoppala. So. And onions. Garlic. Last the ginger. Yes. Mm. Okay. Okay, now it's gonna be loud, so we're just not, we're not gonna say anything. And now the paste is done. It's very fine. And we'll just put it aside because now we have to fry the very nice, yes. We have to fry the, the beef and then after that you'll see what we're going to do with the chili paste. Now it's a very easy, uh, like Hanno said, said before, it's a very easy dish. We are doing the paste while the, the beef is marinating or you can do the paste while the beef is cooking. It's really nice. There you go. Lovely chilli. Mm. It does use a lot of chilli, you know. Yeah, it's and quite... it's, it smells. It smells really. You smell the chilli. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We are ready to uh, fry the beef that has been marinated. Hanu is putting in about like half a, half a cup of oil. Yep. Yeah. Heat up the oil. 
Uh, and that's the, the beef. Yeah, let's wait. Yeah, we have to wait for a while. Yeah. Because it's going uh, to be very hot. So this is the beef ding ding, uh-huh. which is a real big favorite in our house in Kuala Lumpur. Uh-huh. And we are really happy and, that we can make it here. It's very and simple. don't worry, because I preheated already. You don't have to wait now. <laughs> we don't have right. to wait too long. Okay. Let's see what, let's see what is hot enough, yeah. It's a very quick fry, so you have to like fry it so it gets a bit crispy and that's it. And then take it out. Oh yes, nice. Like little beef sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel it's very, very tender already. Okay, one more, Saki? Yeah. No, I'll do another one. Don't go too near with the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just have to get it like really nice and crispy. So it doesn't take very long. So just you just have to like like it so you can finish the rest of it to it. How do you go to your thing? So I turn it around one, maybe. Okay. And again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think we take it out now. Yeah. What? There you are. We have done all the beef, but here you only see half of it because uh, there's only the three of us here. So there's only Hanu and I and our and our daughter, 15-year-old daughter. In fact, you know, it's uh, it's good that you can just sort of um, freeze the rest of it. So here now we need to fry the chili, the paste. So Hanu is going to fry the paste. You just after taking out the um, the, the the beef, the last bit, you just leave. Um, all the oil is a bit it's got a bit of liquid in it but doesn't matter and uh, you just sort of use that to then fry the um, fry the chili there you go mm, yummy it's so good I like the sweetness of this soya sauce in there the chili. Mm. Yep. And now we have to cook for a while. Yeah. So this is really nice served with just plain rice. And then, yeah, whatever vegetable you like. Really just stir fry or you can just like a salad. And then your yeah, best is plain rice. We've had it just like that, and you can even make a sandwich. We're going to do that now soon, huh? Yeah. Just make a nice, mm. nice sandwich with it. White bread. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, take a while. Will it take a while? Yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay, give me it? the bowl, Anna. Can give me the bowl. Now it melts quite nicely.
Yes, because of this very thick soy sauce, it's very deep color. It's very dark. Oh, this is quite a lot of chili. I think it yeah. depends depends on how you like it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can always like you know the recipe says 140. We reduce it to 100 grams of chili. In fact, we can use even less mm -hmm. because uh, depending on how 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 spicy you like it, you know, it, it is quite hot actually. But some of us like it very hot, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now, now uh, slowly the. The ginger and the garlic and the onions are good, I think. Mm -hmm. And then it's ready. Very, very spicy. The thing about chili is that you never know how spicy it will be until after it's done. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> then you get the surprise. Surprise! It's very hot. Like even in our house, Uda, when she cooks, she was like, oh, today is very hot, very spicy. And yesterday it wasn't so hot, it was because of the chili, the type of chili. Sometimes we put a bit too much in it. So I hope it's not too spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there we have it, the ding ding. It's a very Indonesian dish, lovely, very nice for the breaking of fast. Have it with stir rice. Here we are again because we forgot to put something in, which is the tamarind juice. So the thing is, usually, I mean, actually, you should put in the tamarind juice uh, before you put in the meat. Okay, it should be uh, fry the the chili paste, put in the tamarind juice and then the beef, but now we just have it here, so it doesn't really matter. So there's the tamarind juice, it's about um, half, uh, half a cup. So there it is, half a cup of tamarind juice. Uh, like I said, it is um, before, before the beef goes in, but you just want to have that, that sour taste of the tamarind juice. So we have the dinding. Ding beef ding ding um, and here is a bit is a bit more sauce in it you can make it thicker if you like so it depends on on the, yeah the preference right okay so that's okay, it yeah thank you for watching us yeah. okay let me just get rid of that video yeah okay cool that looks really cool now uh how long like how long does it take to cook from start to finish do you reckon oh actually it's not i mean like most of the time it's just like the the, the pressure cooking right i mean yeah. like you know so a lot and, and like marinating but the cooking itself is really quick it's yeah. quick so the, the cooking it's uh, uh the pressure cooker is one hour around one hour sure Sure. Mm. What can I ask? What cut of beef you would recommend for this particular recipe? Just a normal, <laughs> <laughs> normal chuck. <laughs> cool. cool. No, really no, no roast beef, but a good quality. Good okay. Quality of beef, yeah. but sure. not the special expensive things without meat. Gotcha. Because yeah. you do yeah. a slice it and then like you're pounding it, yeah. makes it sure. really you know. Yeah. So that's what we like, and, and what we do like about it is the, the soya sauce chili, the, the yeah. soya sauce chili taste. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The, uh... But really be careful with the chili, yeah, because actually I still find even even what we were using was a lot of chili. Yeah. So I yeah. saw, I was thinking that's a lot of chili. Like, <laughs> what, what type of dried chilies did you use? Like, because uh, they look like bird's eye chilies to me. No, we, we use the ones from the Asian Asian store here. I don't know. I think it's from China. It's Chinese. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. But they're very nice. They're mm. very good. They use them. All. Is that right? Very sure. Nice. Sure. Yeah. Now that that looks uh, fiery, but yeah, very nice, obviously. Now I want to ask um, if people want to turn down the spiciness, could they add some tomato in it or? No, I don't think so. I think it just reduce the chili. Okay. Because, uh, like for example, our daughter likes it just with the sauce and with the with the sweet soya sauce actually. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We stop. 
Yeah. There. <laughs> Oh, that's all right. And my final question about your kitchen. How common is it to have your setup in Germany? Because when I see your high tech kitchen, I'm thinking, oh, that's a German influence, you know, but uh... Uh, maybe yeah, because uh, the, 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 the pressure cooker. Yeah. You know, we, when we when we got this apartment uh, 20, 20 years ago, that machine that you see, the pressure cooker <laughs> is uh-huh. more than 20 years old. And wow. it's still, yeah, it's still going, yeah. And we use it a lot. No? Yeah, every day. Yeah. It's really good. It was a good wow. investment. Yeah. So when, when we moved into this place, we were designing the kitchen and I always wanted a, a more, you know, more shall we say bigger. A bigger kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and and a deeper kitchen, a more of a professional kitchen. So so we decided then to, to work with a, a kitchen kitchen uh, design a maker. I mean we designed the kitchen, but he made the kitchen. And uh, and then we went around looking for machines, and uh, and of course the the, the the advice was we went to one, and then this guy I remember, I and mean, we went to this kitchen shop, and yeah, yeah, exactly. So he had this machine, and he said, "Oh, you guys should have this machine." And I don't know, and and I don't think it was because I was Asian that he tried to sell us this because he said, "Oh, you can make dumplings in this machine." <laughs> You can steam dumplings. Yeah, yeah made, exactly, exactly. So, so that 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 he sold it to us. So then we said, and it is a German brand. It's, it's Imperial. Uh-huh. It's been bought over by another company now, and so it's a, it's a yeah. At that time, it was very. It was very expensive actually, and we love it. Yeah, we use it for. We even use it for for for, for um, uh, heat sealing our 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 sauces. We put the jars there and then we can also use it for heat sealing and you know so yeah nice machine jar <laughs> then the rest of it just you know a larger because i used to have a you know, larger oven and then five because we cook a lot so we like to have more space more space yeah <laughs> nice. very cool very cool all right well thanks very much for this guys a great recipe as always and um where did you say the recipe is from again originally just to give a shout out to yeah, it's either from the Johor palette or or uh, malaysian heritage uh, by kasom type and uh and, and hamida okay sure sure great great okay it, it'll be in our uh, pdfs anyway uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 guys uh, thank lovely you. recipes yeah 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 <laughs> Exactly. All right. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Jackie. Bye. Bye. Okay. Next, we have our very own Lisa Yo. Let's have a look, Madam. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so jealous. Yeah, Zakia's and Hanu's kitchen. I know. I know. Man. I, if I hadn't seen your setup, I would have thought that all oh, Germans have that sort of kitchen. <laughs> no, no, no. I am. I'm going to redo the kitchen, and it's true. Like we like to have our kitchen all integrated, yeah, inside. But that pressure cooker I've never seen. Like the one that to make dim sum, the dumps for for steaming, for heating up the uh, plates. They are all pretty standard. You can get that, yeah. And uh-huh. um, the, all these appliances in Germany. They don't they don't use it for one, two years or ten years. Like uh when, when Zakia was saying 20 years old, I agree because like dishwasher, we can use it for 20, 25 years old before it goes kaput. Nice. Amazing. I'm yeah. jealous. I'm going to redo my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to get in as your consultants. All right, Lisa, yeah. what, what are you making for us in this segment? Oh yo, something really, really simple. Roti John. <laughs> Roti John. All right, guys. Uh do you okay. Do you know why it's called Roti John, by the way? Actually, I really don't know, but I I I, I think because you know we call the all the white people John, eh? Mark John, John, John. And uh, I think and because it's like with bread, it is not something common for us. And so I think we call it Roti John because of that. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. actual part I really don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, for those who don't know, roti in Malay just means bread, okay? So I, yeah. I think a lot of people think roti means roti chanai because they're used to the word roti chanai. You oh, know yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Roti yeah. is just bread. So this is actually uh, Lisa's take on roti john. It looks like a very gourmet, healthy version. Because I've been <laughs> to Ramadan bazaars all over Malaysia and their roti john are just slathered with a lot of sauce, right? Usually, I know, I really don't like that. I like it when it's like uh, crispy. Okay. Uh, it's a must-have for me. 
Okay. <laughs> let's enjoy. Right. All yeah. right. Thank you, Madam. I'll see you yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. Let's play Lisa's Roti John. Here we go. First, you would need to have uh, this is um, minced beef, yeah, and then you need a little bit of cumin, uh, some minced um, onion, a bit of uh, green chili, minced and spring onion, and of course, you would need the egg. So, roti john is actually like a um, omelette, you know, but um, in Asia, we tend to call uh all the white people uh john mat john yeah so the roti because it's like so omelette like and it's very more uh, um, white or european um uh style so we call it roti john so let's start first what you need to do is um the minced meat here you need to give it a bit of a frying yeah so to fry this you don't need anything else just uh, normally, I would not even bother using oil, but I think I just use a tiny wee bit of oil, just a little, so that nothing sticks. Okay, so you don't mix anything inside here, you don't need to do that, because then this mixture would need to go into, like you have to add the eggs, it's like making mataba in some ways, yeah, but we use uh, the baguette, this is the baguette in in germany we get very very nice bread yeah so i've already taken a bit of the baguette cut it into half like this so that's when we will press it later okay i'll show you in any case later so let's just throw this in just no salt no sugar no nothing just you just have to cook it a little bit and then we're going to let it cool down before we add the eggs, egg mixture and the rest of the mixture. The rest of the mixture will be basically raw going into it. Okay, in the meantime, before we do anything else, let's do the sauce. Because I need to cool that uh, very quickly before I can do anything else. So, sauce is here. Very simple. We do. Okay. Don't make our life complicated. We have to use sometimes all the products that we have at home. So this is my favorite lingam, lingam chili sauce. I love it. So you just put lingam chili sauce. Wait. Yeah. Mix it with tomato sauce if you want it really. So you get like a balance of sourness, sweetness, spiciness. Yeah. The whole thing. Mix it. I love it when, when, when this, this, this combination uh, uh, is mixed together. And then, what you do is, you would like to have lime juice. Yeah, let me just show you. This is the lime juice here. Yeah. Mix it. Let me just try this. To see if I need to add sugar or if I need to add like other stuff in it. Oh my god. Just lingam and ketchup. The taste is wonderful. And um, a bit of sesame seed just to give it a nice color. And there you go. Very simple, quick to eat, easy to make uh, sauce for the... Uh, roti john okay now here i have three eggs so just break those eggs put inside you can um you can be generous and put more eggs if you want depending on how many you are trying to feed at home yeah um i like i like mine with lots of eggs uh, because fundamentally this is roti john and you need something with an eggy hang on let me just swipe all this and then we have uh you start mixing in the uh, onion, chili, and uh, uh, spring onion. Now, my family, we use cumin inside here. So we would add like um, this much, half a teaspoon of cumin. And a bit of salt. You can choose at this point to use white pepper or black pepper. Uh, for me, I prefer white pepper, so a bit of white pepper. 
and then um, give this a mix. Whisk this a little bit. Ah, I'm so messy now today. Okay. Guys, this is like unbelievable simple, but it is so nice to have. Let me just give this up a little bit. Okay. That's how it should look like. Now it's time to add the beef. So when you don't really fry the beef until it's completely dry, what you get is also you get the juice a little bit from the beef and this will add a little bit of flavor, a different kind of flavor to your roti john. Yeah? So, but I do know that you can use, uh, some people use basically uh, sardine or um, um, chicken, anything goes, whatever makes you happy. So basically, this is how it looks like. There we go. You can see here. Okay, now we are going to make our roti john. Let's see. There we go. Do not use a lot of oil here. So technically, you just put a little bit of oil and then uh, brush it a little bit, yeah? So I'm going to just deep. You basically press it. Press. Yeah, and then press the egg mixture into, look at that. Now this goes and continue pressing. Watch your heat. It's very important because we have to do this quite a, for a long a bit of time in order to achieve the crispiness and this pressing. So you don't want it to be very high temperature. Yeah. If you do that, then you burn it before anything. So you don't use a lot of oil in that. Let me just uh, quickly check. Okay. So now when you get to this point, man, see like you turn it. You look at that. So now we want to we want to make sure. Hang on. This this thing is making me crazy. Okay. You want to now press it in such a way that the back part of it is also crispy. Yeah, this thing is I don't know what's wrong with it, but just do this. This is very very simple. The kids, especially I think the kids would love it. But you know, if the kids don't have any, um, uh, don't eat any uh, chili, then skip the chili. Yeah, so not necessary. You need to do everything with just the chili there. So just at least just what what the kids like. Um. I use this, this, oh, panas, uh, don't try to do what I do, yeah, so, I mean, this thing is panas, so, abracadabra, cook them all, I think I, I find something to throw, ah, this one, Kela, can you hear the sound? Jealous, huh? Stop you. It's really hot. Okay. Yeah. I think I don't cut the rest. Lah. Please, you're so dull. Okay. Let's use this. Now, somehow, you know, you can use like tongs or whatever to hold it. Somehow for me, I always want to make sure that I use my hands. Yeah, so I'm just going to... It looks like a mini mataba in some ways, but uh, extremely delicious. So just to make it a little bit prettier. Hang on a minute. I purposely put in some... Um, this... Um, onion... Uh, not onion... Cucumber and um, this is a radish, a radishian radish, yeah. So because um, when you eat something like this, you want to have a little bit of a balanced taste, yeah. Uh, something. This is a bit heavy, and um, the the cucumber and anything cucumber can also be carrot, but 
at best is when it has a bit of juice so that it breaks that um that heaviness in the mouth before you take another another bite okay i'm gonna put in the sauce here right just it's like a boat like that you know <laughs> so, okay okay voila my roti john i try you first you listen to the sound can you hear delicious <laughs> try this for your buka puasa or try this for your um when you makan your sahur yeah try this it's really good and thank you once again and um, i wish everyone all the muslim out there selamat ber, selamat berpuasa and uh, or salam ramadan cheers bye bye everyone okay now you can see, guys, uh, why we call her Lisa Gila, yeah? Oh, uh, yo! That's not Let me bring Renee on screen. Uh, Renee, with us. Um, so, Renee, what's your verdict on Lisa's vision? <laughs> Did you smile, Renee, when you watch me? Uh -huh. Even I like this, like this. Uh -huh. uh, Renee, you're muted, actually. Hang on. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. cool. Okay. Yeah. So what yeah. do you think? Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, not not our typical uh, approach to the normal roti john, right? Uh, where <laughs> normally roti john, you have this uh, all the veg is julienne put together between sandwich and then all the sauce, uh, really you know smother with a lot of mayonnaise and all those. This is yeah. the type that we normally know from the bazaar. But we know Lisa is always putting a, a good approach to all the dishes, where keeping it uh, healthy a little bit. And a little bit clean on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> I know that when you go to the Bazaar Ramadan, right? I really don't like it. There's too many things going on in the food. And then the thing is not nice and crispy. It's like um, it's just like eating a bread that you cut into two and put everything inside. I like it when you cut. Ooh. <laughs> it, lo it looks good though. Does uh, Renee, do you know why it's called Roti John? Uh, honestly, it's it, it, people know by, by the story is that uh, the John as the common name for everyone and it came through that period where that British uh, period and then knowing sandwich, I put some mm. together. So bread is not something, you know, for, for us, it's not a culture to eat and uh, it's common to, to that. So John, roti and John, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roti John. Masih baik, kita tak panggil roti mak saleh. <laughs> yeah, we're sticking with that story. Now, uh, with Roti John, do you usually, do you only ever use beef mince or do you, does it come with other stuff or? It comes with many things, right? I've seen some doing it in, uh, with uh, sardine, some just vegetarian and some with uh, uh, chicken, also lamb, right, Rene? Yeah, the, uh, so the best thing you can do at home, right? If you have, uh, like just now, you have the uh, daging ding ding extra. You can also uh -huh. whip it up in the yes. egg. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You can top it yes. up. Uh, curry. Chicken. Yeah, chicken yeah. curry, if you have leftover, it's a good to top up rather than normal typical means that you have to go to the shop and get it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you're right, Rene. Uh, the Malaysian version, they use mayonnaise. They drizzle mayonnaise over it and they drizzle the chili sauce. It's a very sloppy sort of thing, not like these. It's very kind of like a la carte version. Go <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks again, Lisa. Another great thank video. You. Yep. Thank you, Renee. Thank, thank you, Jackie. You. Okay. Salam Ramadan. Okay, ciao. Okay, let's bring on uh, Elias Muhammad. Elias. Hi, Elias. everybody. Hi, Renee. Hi, Hi Jackie. Elias. By the way, guys, uh, Elias is usually based in the Netherlands, but you have just arrived in Malaysia over the last day yes. or so. What are you doing and over there? Enjoying myself with my family here now, and today I uh, I just uh, taught them how to make the batamburu as well. So we are uh, having the uh, buka puasa um, breaking fast with the 
uh, Batang Batang Buru today. Okay, Batang Buru. Uh, Rene, do you know Batang Buru? This is like a savory Batang Buru. Do you, do you know it or I don't know? It. Ah, okay. The the savory one, uh, I'm not sure of. Uh, I've tried it, but it's always about the peanut inside, and then you know, no, it is sweet. yeah, that's the, yeah. That, that's the biscuit that that they make yeah. from the rice. Uh, that's different. That's dessert, yeah, or it's rather um, hari raya cookies. But this one is for the book of Pasa, uh, exclusively, <clears throat> and this is uh, uh, one of the recipe from the palace, yeah? from the very old time, and. Um, <clears throat> Once I prepared this, and a, a good friend of mine from the royal family, he came over to Amsterdam. He uh, traveled to London, and when I served this, he said, "Where did you get this recipe?" I said, "Well, I get it from someone. This is very old recipe from the palace." He said, "I have not, I've not had this for a long time." So uh, lucky me. Yeah. Which, which, uh, which royal family is this? It's uh, from Trondheim. It's from okay. it's, it was okay. the cousin, cousin of the the Tukumizan now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there you go, guys. Batang Buruk from Trungganu. Let's have a look. And uh, hopefully you guys can stick around and answer a few more questions after this because I don't think <laughs> any of us other MOMC chefs have ever seen this before. Okay. Let's have a look. <laughs> um, Assalamualaikum. Salam Ramadan to all Muslim and Muslimat all over the world and um, I hope your day uh, is as good as mine uh, Ramadan is always uh, so joyful for all of us uh, to celebrate yeah? um, so I'm Elias Muhammad from uh, the ne Netherlands uh, I represent uh, the east coast of Malaysia from the state of Tunganu and today uh, I will bring one more uh, traditional recipe from Trunganu. It calls Batanguro. So this is also another family recipe. And um, my stepmother used to tell me this is uh, one of the um, special recipe from the palace. Yeah. So um, actually, Batanguro is. Um, uh, cons uh, Batamburu consists of uh, three main um, things. Um, it's um, you need the sauce, and you need the wrapper, and you need the filling. Yeah. So um, the main ingredient is beef or cows, uh, and <clears throat> it needs to be uh, cooked quite for a long time until the texture gets uh, really tender so you can um, actually um, break it um, into pieces just using uh, your hands and um, this um, for this I use about um, I think about 300 grams and then I already cooked it for about um, one hour and a half, almost two hours, to make sure that it's um, uh, soft enough uh, to break. And um, for the rest, uh, for the um, filling, uh, I used two potatoes and uh, two carrots and two chilies. This goes um, inside, one goes inside the filling and one goes um, into the, uh, the sauce. And I used three shallots, um, ginger. I have sliced it quite a lot already because in this dish we uh, we use a lot of ginger. Yeah, the, the freshness of ginger gives a, a very tasty, um, um, you know, uh, deliciousness of, of for the batamburu. And um, this is the uh, what I call it. Um, um, masala darat. Eh? So Trunganu uh, spices, we have all different kind of masala. This is uh, made of a combination, combinations of different spices. And um, we have krutu, we have uh, kurma, we have uh, gulai darat, we have uh, gulai kawa. So this is the one of the gulai darat, which uh, I use inside the, this, uh, the, 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 the soup. Yeah? Um, and then we'll turn into the sauce later. And um, uh, mushrooms uh, also. Mushrooms uh, goes inside the 
uh, filling as well and it goes uh, into the sauce as well and then I use uh, uh, black pepper and uh, white pepper um, and salt and also the um, celery uh, leaves yeah so since I've already uh, made the filling it's actually actually quite simple it's, it's almost the same method as making the curry puff um, filling except you don't use spices you just use ginger and all these fresh ingredients here and uh, uh, for seasoning only um, black pepper um, and uh, white pepper and salt um, that's all yeah and then uh, now I'm going to show you how to prepare the the sauce I have the a stock from the beef already already so it's all here so you need you need the stock yeah to to, to make the the sauce um, then uh, I'll need butter uh, just one moment so I use about um, let's say um, 60, 60 gram of butter so here I'll chop the a lot And then um, the garlic. I can throw the ginger already. So I will let the ginger um, get slightly crispy here. Yeah? And then here goes shallot and um, garlic. So all the um, uh, things here I've already washed uh, thoroughly. And uh, one red chili. There it goes. Just sweet for about um, one minute more, one and a half. And then I will add um, about two tablespoons of um, just normal flour to thicken up the sauce. And um, just make it like um, preparing ragu. So it gives a very nice smell already and the uh, ginger starts to get crispy. Now I can um, add the, the flour. And then this you have to fry for a while, yeah, as well. Let it blend uh, with everything here. So that's it. And now I can add the the stock, little by little, yeah.
So you have to keep stirring it, otherwise it gets clumpy. <clears throat> So as you can see, the sauce start, starts to thicken already. And then uh, I can up, uh, add up the salt now. Black pepper. White pepper. And um, I just uh, slice the mushrooms uh, finely. And let the sauce simmer for all. This recipe is very popular um, during Ramadan as well, eh? in the old days. But um, in the modern days, people uh, seem to forget this recipe even exist, you know, so that's why I uh, I want to um, popularize this again for the folks of Changanu. So let's let's not forget the, um, our heritage from the past, you know, this used to be one of the exquisite um, dish uh, from the palace and uh, let's just share with all of us you know the um, deliciousness of the of the dish. <laughs> so I think uh, the texture looks quite all right already. Um, it doesn't have to be too long eh? because the it's already boiled. It's been cooked for about two hours. So all I need to do now is just to add the. Uh, Celery um, leaf, and it's done. All right. Okay, I've brought Renee back on as well. Okay, Elias, um, uh, when Paul mm. was editing your video, he wasn't sure if there was something missing, but like... Oh. Um... Yeah, <laughs> but the last part was missing. Yeah. The, 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 the rolling part, yeah. Yeah, we didn't get it. So can you just fill in for the audience what... The... Okay, the, the, you, you prepare the dough like uh, uh, like you're making the kue dada. You know, the te te texture is the same. Uh, yeah. I normally use, uh, I always uh, mix with a bit of butter. So when you put it on, uh, on the pan and you can just uh, roll it and make it as thin as possible and then flip it uh, a bit and then fill up uh, the, uh, the filling about one tablespoon and just roll it uh, nicely. And then uh, once you have it rolled, you have to dip it in the egg. You beat the egg like two eggs. You dip it in the egg and you fry it in shallow fry, shallow fry until it turns nice uh, and brown and uh, like golden brown. And then you serve on the plate and you just pour the the sauce on top of it. Okay. So that's what's, it. what's in the crepe batter? Uh, it's only one egg and butter. Like when I when I use three cups of uh, normal flour, I add about sixty gram of butter. And one egg, it'll be a pinch of salt. That's it. I put just put it in the blender, just blend for a while. And uh, you need like about three cups of water as well, three or three and a half cup of water. And that is it. You will get the perfect um, uh, uh, dough for, for that. Okay. Um, Rene, have you ever tried this, or does this look? Are you, were you born in Trangano, Rene? Or yeah, so born <laughs> born in Trangano. So uh, quite interesting, you know, <laughs> yeah, I've never had it before, but 
it reminds me very, you know, when, when I looked at it, and then obviously we missed uh, some part, but immediately when I saw the picture, it reminds me immediately <laughs> of uh, Tengku Abu and Afzan's uh, Kue, uh, what do you call this? Uh, the one that Kue I cook with, uh, the Queen. Sorry, uh, that? Kue Dada, yeah. Kue, 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 Kue Ropa. Kue, no, no, it's uh, quite similar to Kue Ropa. If you're familiar with Kue Ropa, but Ropa is normally with the fish filling. Yeah, and in in the modern days they have kuih ropa with beef fillings as well and chicken. But the original kuih ropa is with the fish fillings, but without the sauce. But this one is when when you have it, when you you just pour the sauce on it and you 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 cut it and you you scoop it with the sauce in it, and this is so delicious. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a Malay version of a young tofu. There you go. From <laughs> 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 Western influence as well, with using the butter and using like flour to like cook yeah. stuff like yeah, 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 yeah. Fascinating. I've never, never heard. But yeah. first of all, guys, uh, batang buro. Uh, the reason why Renee was thinking of something else was because if you Google batang buro, you'll find it's uh, <laughs> everywhere we else. Have another <laughs> one. We have, we have yeah. one more bantal buro. This which means old pillow you know but that that is the the dough is made made of a rice flour you do the same thing but you steam it you steam it also the filling is also fish and the sauce is also mixture of fish and coconut milk so it's very rich actually but they roll the same way it's only the filling is with the with the labu you know labu the the labu ai and fish and and uh, um, shallots and um, uh, ginger and um, garlic so the, the rolling system is the same and the, the pouring of the sauce is the same it's only the taste is different so that that one calls bantal buru bantal buru why is all the yeah. buru <laughs> yeah everything is old and, and it's uh, a yeah, I, yeah. I don't even know yeah. why they call it that yeah uh, because you know bantal banta buru or bantal Banta Buso, Banta Buro, this is always uh, <laughs> reminds you of what's your favorite, right? Your home, your, yeah, your exactly, what you call childhood yeah. and all those. So it's yeah. kind of a relation to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Yeah, but, well, but I tell you, because not so many young generations, they're familiar with this dish anymore because yeah. this is so classic from many, many years ago. And in Trinidad, we have so many of those and people don't know this modern generation because they're so influenced by the European uh, uh, yeah. food, you know, we make D and Kentucky Fried Chicken and everything else and all the cheese stuff, and they yeah. they try to forget all this uh, heritage from from uh, our ancestors. You know, that's why I'm trying to to bring back all this uh, recipe to the modern generation. Yeah. yeah, we'll get you and Renee to collaborate on. Uh, a yeah, project. it would be nice. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you very much for uh, hopping on, uh, Renee and also uh, Elias. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Again, don't forget, if you want the recipes, you need to sign up, join our email list, which is malaysianchefs.com slash join today. And we will see you next time. We're taking a little bit of a break with... Selamat berbuka puasa. Bye, Renee. Bye, everyone. Thanks again, Renee. Thanks, Elias. Bye. <laughs>